Greetings everyone. I'm sure you remember this DCO circuit that I did a while back. You got your uh, digital audio uh, or digital to analog converter here and going through a resistor. You got a reset transistor here to an integrating capacitor output out. Makes for a nice uh, uh, sawtooth wave with digital control via a timer. Well, I kind of got to thinking that this part right here looks an awful lot like just this simple thing which is this really just an RC network for converting a PWM output to a DC output um, PWM filter as I'm calling it here which is essentially a, a, a digital audio converter in its own right it can you can vary the PWM here and you get varying DC voltages here and it's essentially you know converting PWM to a waveform so I got to thinking about, well, could you do something like this? Combine the two ideas, make the PWM into the DAC output there through the resistor with the reset transistor capacitor out to here. Well, let's give it a try. And here's my code right here. Uh, timer 1 initializes set to 1, so that just basically sets the PWM to a very high frequency. And I have it set to half the duty cycle. And down here now is where I'm doing the reset pulse for each uh, wave. And I'm basically just setting a digital write to pin 8, 1, and then back to 0, and then delaying 10 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and go take a look at this on the scope. Here's the test setup, pretty much like what we had before. And if we go up on the scope, you can see that indeed we are getting what is more or less a sawtooth wave. So let's go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and we'll turn up the, uh, okay, we'll turn that down and, yeah, let's do that there. That looks, that shows it a little bit better. Oh, that's, that's much better right there. So, yeah, anyway, you can see that there's a bit of a curve on the slope. Um, I'll discuss that a little bit later. But now let's go back and we'll double the frequency and see what happens to the amplitude, just like before. I have now set the delay down to 5 milliseconds, so this should double the frequency. And it should also half the amplitude because you'll see the PWM values the same. So let's go take a look at it on the scope. And sure enough, you can see there, uh, we have the oscilloscope settings exactly the same as before. The uh, frequency is doubled and the amplitude is halved. So let's go ahead and go pump that PWM value all the way up and uh, check out what happens. I think you already know, but you know, for the sake of completeness. And now here you can see highlighted there the new PWM value. Let's go take a look on the scope. And look at that. It uh, appears to be making a bit of a liar out of me. Um, that is definitely more than twice the amplitude we had before, but uh, one of the th one of the differences here is there is no pulse width anymore. This is essentially pure DC coming out of the chip now, and uh, whereas before you know it was pulses going in, and you'll notice that the slope is now nice and pretty well straight. I'm wondering if the uh, pulsing might have something to do with that too. So. Uh, Clearly this is going to warrant some further experimenting, but on the whole I'm going to say uh, it's pretty well a success. So, But one other thing we can think about is what if we reduce the frequency of the PWM? What effect will that have on the output signal? Well, uh, we can experiment with that pretty easily. And that's exactly what I've done here. I set the timer 1 initialized to 3000, that's in microseconds so that it's basically 3 milliseconds uh, to the delays 10 milliseconds so that our pulse width modulation is triggering like about three times per cycle instead of many thousands of times per cycle thus creating a much slower sample rate so let's go see what it does on the scope and sure enough that is exactly what's happening I have uh, no idea how this uh, particular waveform would sound it might actually sound kind of good because I'll bet that doesn't sound like uh, traditional digital aliasing. So uh, reducing the uh, frequency of the pulse width modulation might be an interesting parameter to include in a synthesizer like this. So there you go, uh, a few surprises, uh, but all in all I would uh, say that that actually worked very well and that I think a synthesizer utilizing uh, these principles could be built pretty easily. 
I don't know when I'm going to get to a project like this. I already have enough projects on my plate as it is. But if anybody else out there wants to run with it, just uh, let me know your results. Some of the questions I have have to do with the curvature on the slope and why it was that setting the PWM all the way up uh, greatly increased the amplitude of uh, that uh, one wave. So if you have any uh, ideas on why that's happening, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.